Hi, Arkfield Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday afternoon, November the 12th. I wanted to put out a video discussion on the latest with respect to numerous signals that suggest to me we're going to have a colder than normal December across much of the nation. We uh, did a video about this a couple of days ago. I wanted to give some updated information and go through se several teleconnection indices. Uh, a look at tropical forcing and even the possibility of a rare November stratospheric warming event. Let's start off here by looking at a teleconnection index known as the East Pacific Oscillation. This has to do with temperature and precipitation patterns out across the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. And this particular plot extends all the way out to right here about Thanksgiving Day, the 27th, Thursday the 27th of November. Now, this is the model run from the ensemble version of the European, and it strongly suggests the EPO slides into negative territory towards the last week of November going into that Thanksgiving holiday period. This is a favorable sign for uh, the possibility of colder than normal weather out across the central U.S., the eastern U.S., as it is often correlated with a ridge of high pressure that builds aloft, let's say the 500 millibar pattern, uh, 500 millibar level over places like Alaska. That in turn favors the transport of cold air masses from northern Canada into the central and eastern U.S. Again, this is a negative EPO as we head towards the latter part of November going into December, which is a favorable sign for colder than normal weather across much of the nation. Now, just as the Arctic Oscillation has a closely related cousin known as the North Atlantic Oscillation, which, by the way, we'll show in a moment here, the EPO has a closely related cousin known as the West Pacific Oscillation. It, too, is forecasted by the European model to slide into negative territory as we approach the latter week of November. Again, this plot ends at the end of, uh, excuse me, at the uh, 27th of November, which is Thanksgiving Day, and this too is kind of an interesting sign here for colder, potentially snowy weather in the eastern U.S., because oftentimes a negative WPO this time of the year favors a trough over places like the Hawaii Islands in the central part of the Pacific a Ocean, and uh, usually if a trough develops over the Hawaiian Islands, there's uh, typically a corresponding trough setting up over the eastern part of the U.S. So this is an interesting combination with a negative EPO. This negative WPO favors in the colder than normal weather across the central and eastern U.S. and potentially uh, with a trough in the east, at least a potential trough in the east, potentially snowier than normal weather as well during the month of December. Now, I just mentioned the North Atlantic Oscillation. Those prior two uh, plots were... Uh, Regarding the Pacific Ocean, the North Atlantic Oscillation has to do with temperature and precipitation patterns over the North Atlantic, over the Arctic region. Uh, this is the forecast, again using the ensemble version of the European model here, again going all the way out to the 27th of November. And this is the neutral line right here. And you can see it is almost the entire time, in fact, the entire time, uh, in negative territory. A sustained period of time for the NAO in negative territory and the AO in negative territory this time of the year is usually correlated with what we call high latitude blocking. That's higher heights than normal or higher pressures than normal over places like Canada or Iceland or northern Canada. That in turn favors the transport of cold air masses from northern Canada into the central and eastern U.S. Now, yes, it does get awfully close to the neutral line here, but the fact that it is sustained for such a long period of time here is, in my opinion, quite favorable sign for uh, uh, that colder than normal transport of air from Canada into the central and eastern U.S. as we wrap up November and move into the month of December. So now let's kind of shift gears a little bit. Those the first three uh, plots here dealt with teleconnection indices, either with respect to the Pacific Ocean or the North Atlantic. 
Here we're looking at a plot that we've shown often here at arcfieldweather.com related to tropical forcing around the globe. This is a, a, a forecast map of what we call the Madden Julian Oscillation, which kind of tracks a tropical disturbance as it regularly propagates along the uh, equatorial region, the tropical region of the globe here. On this kind of a plot here, the MJO moves in a counterclockwise fashion through what we call different phases. That happens to be phase seven here, phase eight, and then phase one. These are just different locations around the world, with, which are indicated here, by the way. These are those, in fact, locations for these particular phases where that tropical disturbance, which is basically a complex of thunderstorms, will move as we progress all the way into about the middle part of December. This particular European model forecast run goes all the way out to the 12th of December. Now, earlier in the week, we showed the temperature composite maps associated with the different phases or locations of the MJO this particular time of year, November, December, January. When the MJO moves through phase seven into phase eight and even into phase one, that typically, not always, but typically is associated with colder than normal air in the central and eastern U.S. So this is a yet another favorable sign for much of the nation being colder than normal as we get to the end of November and then go into the month of December. Now there's one other part of the atmosphere I'd like to discuss now. It is the stratospheric level and there are signs here. Numerous computer forecast models are suggesting what we call a stratospheric warming event and that is rare indeed for the month of November. This happens to be a forecast map from the very latest today's run of the GFS model for the 28th of November, the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, when we're looking at a 30 millibar temperature anomalies here. This is way up there at the top of the atmosphere, what we call the stratosphere. This whole area here is kind of a warm blob, uh, 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 at least relative to the, air, to the air surrounding it. It is a warm blob up there at the top of the atmosphere. Indeed, it looks like a pretty strong what we call sudden stratospheric warming event here with this warm blob centered over Canada at the end of November. Now, I mentioned up front here that a November stratospheric warming event is quite unusual. I've seen some unconfirmed reports that we haven't had a November stratospheric warming event since the year 1968. And stratospheric warming is quite an interesting phenomenon. Once it takes place, it uh, can ultimately lead to the transport of cold air masses from the high latitudes to the middle latitudes. In this particular case, this forecast for the latter part of November kind of is a positive sign for the transport of cold air masses, let's say from Canada into the U.S. as we progress through the month of December. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes the cold air uh, intrusion from the high latitudes to the middle lat latitudes takes place on the other side of the pole. But again, this is quite an interesting forecast because it is rare to see a stratospheric warming event during the month of November, albeit the latter part of November. But it too is a kind of a favorable sign, a bullish sign for a much of the nation being colder than normal during the month of December. Well, what might all of this mean here for the month of de December with respect to the 500 millibar height anomaly a pattern here? And this is the all-important uh, flow in the middle and upper parts of the atmosphere. And in this particular case, this is, a, again, a European model forecast map for that entire month of November 26 to December 26. So it averages for the entire month here, basically the month of December here, what kind of anomalies there may be in the upper part of the atmosphere. And I mentioned, first of all, that negative EPO. And here is Alaska right here. And here is that ridge that I talked about, usually associated with a negative EPO. Also, we talked about a negative WPO, that West Pacific Oscillation. 
here is that trough near the Hawaiian Islands, which are right here. Again, this is a forecast map for just about the entire month of December. And I mentioned all the time there's a trough in the middle of the Pacific Ocean during the winter season. There's kind of a corresponding trough over the eastern U.S. Indeed, there's certainly signs right here for that to take place here. So these are the kind of uh, teleconnection indices that point to support for this kind of a forecast map. One other important feature here, I talked about possibility of high latitude blocking. When you have a negative NAO for a sustained period of time, it usually is correlated with high latitude blocking or in this case higher heights over places like Greenland, northern uh, Canada, Iceland, and all of that favors the transport of cold and normal air right here, kind of go along with this flow here from way up there in northern Canada into the central and eastern U.S. So again, all these signals right now, we're still a few weeks away, point to the possibility of a colder than normal December. Maybe in the last few days of November will show this as well, but uh, we'll continue to monitor all of these teleconnection indices to tropical forcing and the possibility of a rare stratospheric event, a warming event, uh, later this month here. We'll continue to monitor all of these signals over the next few weeks. But for right now, it continues to show the possibility of a colder than normal December across much of the nation. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.